The war crimes folder? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 417 channel, screen prints, 224 files. Oh. <laughs> now the 224. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's from February 8th of 2018. Mm -hmm. Now I've been emailing you the evidence for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And for some reason you think that my wife has to have uh, actual custody of my sons without you uh, doing what the law requires. Mm -hmm. And then you're not enforcing my right to have state-issued identification. Yes. You're not enforcing my right to sue you. Right. And every day I keep telling you what the actual law says. <laughs> now, let's see. July of 2018, a year ago. Yes. I was emailing pictures. Yes. Let's see what June 21st of 2018 looks like. <laughs> because I really don't know. Mm -hmm. See, I just keep going through the laws. And you keep obstructing the laws. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's see. Screenshot. I'm documenting that it is against the law to issue court orders. Mm -hmm. Where the petitioner did not sign the order Brent based in. Uh-huh. The respondent was not given any due process, and there are forgeries of the ex-officio superior court clerk. Yes. Now, this, mm -hmm, it is also a violation of the Bill of Rights. Yes, the Indian Bill of Rights mm -hmm, and the RCWs of the state of Washington. Yes. Mm -hmm, to attempt to charge a person with a crime without the involvement of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time, yes, I was probably talking about the two-count criminal complaint where the police and sheriff's departments would not admit that I wasn't in Jefferson County, yes, and that I was emailing them the documentation of my rights being violated. <laughs> now, let's see, screenshot 888. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, unable to... Pre well, we there's literally thousands upon thousands of emails and variations of emails yes the documentation of the actual laws mm -hmm. and for years and years and years you have obstructed me from having my sons mm -hmm. now today's lawsuits are yes the department of education getting sued for issuing my wife a teaching certificate yes without her having the legal right to use my last name. <laughs> the fraud of paying her to teach, yes, without having the legal right to teach, yes. And then any and all accounts right now. Um, Office 365, mm-hmm. You are sued and going to prison for refusing to enforce the laws. Yes. Um, those uh, that are attorneys, yes, that said they, what? Oh, uh, don't have to enforce the law. Mm -hmm. The requirements of state law and tribal law must be enforced to issue court orders. Yes. Now, this was an email that I sent from the Hotmail account. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I sent this, mm -hmm, uh, the requirements of the VAWA, yeah, uh, on June 20, hang on here just a second, mm -hmm, 28th of 2018. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Port of Seattle, Quincy Police Department, King County, yeah, Kennewick Police Department, yeah, uh, let's see, uh, uh, WSGC, oh, Stevens County Department of Justice, mm -hmm. and nobody really thinks that they have to do what the law says. Mm. Why would you think that? Mm. Um, emailing explanations of the requirements of law to be able to issue court orders. Mm -hmm. My sons uh, have been abducted, mm -hmm. uh, international abduction, kidnapping because of the issuance of court orders. Mm -hmm. 
that removed them from my custody without any due process to myself. Yeah. <laughs> they are missing and being held hostage. Uh, protecting citizens. And then there's some videos. Oh. Mm. Let's see here. Uh, required by state, tribal, or territorial law. Yes. Now, uh, in such in such court has jurisdiction over the parties and matter under the law of such state and territory. Reasonable notice and opportunity to be heard is given to the person against whom the order sought sufficient to protect the person's right to due process. Mm. In the case of ex parte orders, notice and opportunity to be heard must be provided within the time required by state, tribal, or territorial law. Mm -hmm. You didn't do that. Now, the term kidnapping means an offense that has an element of abduction, yeah, restraining, confining, or carrying away another person by force or threat of force, yes, serious violent felony. Oh. Is there some reason after a year of emails? Mm -hmm. Womenslaw.org, parental kidnapping, Arizona, restraining orders. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That you, you do believe that you can, can just keep doing this for years and years and years. Uh, screen prints. Oh, uh-huh. Message blocked in my own account. Oh, oh. Now, what what is it, Sheriff, that you don't understand about the obligation to enforce the laws? Do you want me to impress you? I would have thought three and a half years of emails that documented all what's I would be impressed with it. <laughs> I would be impressed with any father right now that continued to document that my rights are being violated. Oops. My sons are missing and kidnapped. Uh -huh. There are court orders that happen to be in violation of the requirements of civil and criminal law. Mm -hmm. And I want them removed. Yes. <laughs> See, here's a screen print. The respondent did not receive actual notice of the court hearing. Yeah. Uh, and another screen print. Ouch. The petitioner didn't sign it. Oh, oh, oh. Uh-huh. And then uh, there's another screen print. Oh, this is from how to obtain a protection order from the Washington State uh -huh, Supreme Court. <laughs> now. Uh, I gave you all these pictures, yes, and you must attend this hearing to continue the protection order, yes. If you do not come to this hearing, the petition will be dismissed and you will not be protected by an order, yes. If the respondent does not come to the hearing and has been served, the court may still grant a protection order. Yes. The first protection order can be issued ex parte if there's a real allegation of domestic violence or child abuse. Mm -hmm. It can be a temporary protection order. Yes. You cannot issue a protection order unless the petitioner did attend the actual court hearing and did sign the protection order, Brent. Mm-hmm. If she didn't go to the court hearing, uh-huh, the petition has to be dismissed, uh-huh, and you will not be protected. <clears throat> if the respondent did not come to the hearing, uh-huh, and had been served right now, the court may grant a protection order. Yes. Now, when you don't serve the respondent, mm -hmm, you cannot have the court hearing. <clears throat> All permanent. Protection order enforceable under the full faith and credit? Yeah. The court that issued the order must have had personal subject matter jurisdiction. <laughs> <coughs> Did the court have personal subject matter jurisdiction when issuing the dissolution of marriage? No. You did not have personal or subject matter jurisdiction because the marriage certificate was issued from the United Nations. That means that dissolution of marriage is fraud. Yes. Did the court have personal subject matter jurisdiction when the petitioner did not appear in court? Yes. Did not sign it? Yes. And you did not serve me before having court? 
No. That means it's not enforceable and does not have the full faith and credit of the United States Constitution. Now, remove all the fraud. Do you understand? There was no personal or subject matter jurisdiction to be able to motion the court for dissolution of marriage when the marriage certificate was issued from the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And my wife did know that. Yes. And instead of motioning the court in the United Nations, she decided to circumvent the law. Now, I want you to give me custody of my sons today. Mm -hmm. I gave you tens of thousands of these. The respondent must have had notice and an opportunity to be heard. Yes, sufficient to protect that person's right to due process. Mm -hmm. Now, this idea, right, 18 U.S. Code 2265. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you served me without it being court-ordered, uh, Amendment 1415, Um, 